You know, as a serious fisherman, when I'm on the water for eight or nine hours a day, one of the most important tools is my electronics. And that's what we're doing today. I'm picking up some new Lowrance electronics here at the Bass Pro Shop. You know, new for 2016, the Lowrance lineup is the new HDS Gen 3. But what I'm really excited about is the new Lowrance 3D Structure Scan. Well, Bob, if you're looking for a Gen 3, we've got a couple options. We've got the 7, we've got the 9, then we've got the uh, 12. You know, Ryan, I pretty well made up my mind, though. I'm going to put a pair of the HDS 12s on it. And you know, what we're going to do is we're going to take from out of the box start to a complete installation from stem to stern that will give you an opportunity to see just how this works and how it all goes together. Well, Ryan, pretty well everything that I need is right here. The HDS 12, HDS 12 for the front, the new structure scan 3D, and I'm going to put the new spotlight scan. Need a point one antenna, a NEMA 2000 starter kit. Hey, and with my investment on the front of my boat, I'm definitely gonna have one of the new E-Locks from Durasafe. Just remember, at Bass Pro Shop, your adventure starts here. Today, we're going to be talking about an installation video for Lowrance featuring the new HDS Gen 3 locators, a spotlight scan, a point one antenna, and the brand new Structure Scan 3D product. The items are laid out pretty much in accordance with how we're gonna place them on the boat. We're gonna have an HDS Gen 3 12 on the bow with a spotlight scan transducer supplementing the US2 transducer on the trolling motor. We will be mounting an HDS 12 Gen 3 at the console. Towards the rear of the boat will be positioned a point .1 antenna and then on the transom the brand new Structure Scan 3D. The unique feature of the Structure Scan 3D is that it also serves as the network hub. So when we're connecting the Ethernet cables that will network the two locators together those cables will actually come off of the module box, which is this portion, to network the entire boat together. Through a NEMA network, separate from the ethernet, we will network the point one antenna to, once again, both locators. Today we'll be explaining the difference between the ethernet networking and the NEMA networking to put all of this together. We've laid out all the parts of each of the components, which is a great way to begin your planning for installation onto the boat. This is the new Structure Scan 3D transducer. The module box, which we spoke of previously for the 3D, serves as the Ethernet yellow plug networking port with the Ethernet cable for Ethernet networking. The power cable plugs in there, but also has the two plug-ins for both of the transducer leads. And this is the point one antenna. It actually contains a little arrow. That's the direction to align with the heading sensor. That always aligns towards the bow or the front of the boat. You'll see that its plug is this black plug that looks like that. That's the NEMA network, as opposed to what we spoke about previously with the yellow plug and the module box being Ethernet. Now we have the HDS Gen 3 12. In its box comes a gimbal bracket, of course the locator itself, a skimmer transducer and its mounting hardware, power cord, and a waterproof inline fuse holder. Notably for these HDS-12s, they require a 5 amp fuse. We're going to be using today, for in-dash mounts, you also get a very, very good cutout template. We'll be showing how this is used later for in-dash mounting of this particular unit on the console. 
As we move on down the line, we have our spotlight scan transducer. It contains a plug for the spotlight scan feature and also its combination built-in sonar, the blue plug. It's a NEMA device for the foot pedal or micro switch that mounts on the foot pedal of the trolling motor in order to track the direction that the, that the spotlight scan transducer is looking. Finally, our last HDS-12, just like the previous one that we spoke about, comes with a power cord. A couple of other components that we are going to, to add, because we're putting a NEMA network in the boat, we're going to have to, to have separately purchased a NEMA starter kit. The NEMA starter kit is going to include a power nodule, it's going to include some T's, some terminators, and some baseline cords to begin a NEMA network with. This is a great, great product when you're first starting to install a brand new NEMA network. We're also going to need an additional Ethernet cable because we have to run an Ethernet cable between the structure scan module and this locator and another ethernet between the structure scan module and the other locator. There will be required a couple of extra T's. And then finally, a real good product to have is some dielectric grease. The dielectric grease will be used for any of the permanent connections on the NEMA network or the ethernet network. Any connection that will be plugged in and will remain in place permanently it's always a good idea to use the dielectric compound to ensure you don't get any corrosion and the connections stay clean and fresh throughout the life of the boat. With that, we're going to begin moving products over to the boat and actually start the installation process. We're now going to work with installing the Structure Scan 3D transducer onto the back of the boat. The Structure Scan 3D transducer mounts to the supplied mounting bracket in this fashion. The cable actually comes out in the center of the transducer and that's very, very critical when you mount this new transducer because the plugs have to be ran through the transducer bracket and then the bracket has to be fed all the way down to the top of the transducer first before you even run this wire up and around through the boat to connect to the module that we talked about earlier. We're going to talk about a little about mounting the plate actually on the back of the boat. There's a number of different options. Generally, you'll want to mount this transducer as close to the engine or as close to a setback plate like this one as you can. If you mount it over here off to the side, you're going to have more interference as this side scanning signal bounces off either the motor or the setback plate. So keep it as close as possible. If possible, you can put it in the center of the boat without interfering with anything. That's, that's always a good option. So we're going to mount this transducer in this region as close to the engine and the setback plate as possible.
we level the bracket up. We mark the location for the bracket. Now then we're getting ready to drill the holes. One thing you should always do when you're drilling into fiberglass is initially run the drill backwards because that will start your hole in exactly the right place and it will also keep you from chipping the gel coat as you drill into it. So when you first begin to drill a hole on, on fiberglass, it's always good Line the drill up. And initially, just drill a little bit backwards. Then you can reverse your drill. And drill the hole without having any chips in the gel coat. So now what we'll do after we have the transducer mounted, tightened down, all leveled, we're going to secure the cable. So we'll secure it up against the jack plate, a couple of clamps, moved them down into place, marked my hole, same here, figure out where you want it, mark your hole. So now I'm going to do the same process again with the drill. Drill backwards first, then, then reverse the drill to keep it from chipping the gel coat. And then once again, as we did with the screw holes for the transducer, we'll use some caulking material. I like the Boat Life uh, Life Seal. It's a real good sealant. It's clear to put on the screw when you put it in those holes and that will make the installation watertight where you won't get any water past the screws. Okay, so we have a transducer mounted. So for the next part of our installation, we're going to begin running the wires throughout the boat that we need to run for the sonar transducers, the ethernet network cables, and also the NEMA network. So every boat's different, but generally there, there's always a path from the back of the boat to the console area and then also from the console area up to the bow of the boat. So you just have to figure out where the access areas are in the boat. And then we normally use something like this. It's called a fish tape. You can get it at any hardware store. It's a stiff metal strand that will allow you to push it through the access areas of the boat and then hook the wires on it at the final point and then pull those wires back through using this metal strand. One key is if you see here, some of your fish tapes will have a loop in them on the end. You want to make sure and tape that loop shut. So you don't push this through and then as you're pulling back, have an existing wire go into that loop because this, then this entire fish tape will be stuck somewhere in no man's land on part of the wiring of your boat, which you have no idea which wire it's hooked to. So make sure you don't have any type of an open loop before you start the fish tape. Uh, we've taken four screws out. 
of the access panel, which we can then remove and it opens up a channel which will lead to the back of the boat. So we're going to take our fish tape. We're going to extend it out. And then begin to run the fish tape through the boat towards the back. And so we now have the, the end of the fish tape here. To this we will connect all of the cords, the network cords and the transducer cords that now need to run up towards the console or towards the front of the boat. So in our situation here, we're going to have the cord for the structure scan, 3D transducer. We're going to be mounting the point one antenna in this region. And so we will also begin our NEMA network back here at the back with T's and terminators. We'll be pulling all that forward. It's very, very critical to plan out the network as we were talking about earlier. When you do have a fish tape ran, you wanna make sure that you pull all the cords that you need at one time up to the front so you don't have to repeat the fishing process. So with this in place, we'll now begin the back of the boat with the starting of our NEMA network and our point one antenna. So to continue our installation, the next thing we're going to do is mount the point one antenna. Once again, the point one antenna has an arrow on it in this region, which needs to point towards the front of the boat. This helps align the heading sensor or digital compass, which is on the, the inside of, the, of this puck. When you're trying to choose a location for this puck, make sure you choose a nice flat surface. We're going to mount it in this region. You can also mount it back here. You wouldn't want to mount it on a curved surface of this nature because when you tighten the puck down with the two screws that mount it, if you tighten it down tight on a curved surface, the antenna will actually deform and when it deforms, the heading sensor, which needs to turn on the inside of this antenna, will bind and will not function properly. So make sure that it's mounted on a nice flat surface so it doesn't deform in any way and the heading sensor can continue to turn freely and your antenna will work properly. Once again, arrow pointing towards the back of the boat. We're mounting it here rather than at the console because you always want to mount your GPS antennas as close to your sonar transducers as possible. That will coordinate the spatial element from GPS on your coordinates with your sounding element from your sonar, what you're actually seeing on the bottom. So if the sonar source is here and the antenna is gathering coordinate data for right here, they overlap right on top of each other. And that's what you want for your greatest precision when you're marking your waypoints. So in this situation here, we'll have our GPS antenna here, our glassed in sonar transducer is in the bottom of the boat directly in this location. And we previously mounted our structure scan 3D transducer right here. We have to drill a hole for this NEMA connector to go through. A 5 8 inch diameter hole will do it. So put our little rubber seal on. Pointer arrow forward, mark the spot. We want to drill a hole once again in carpet, backwards first.
Now we have our point one antenna mounted. So the next thing is going to be to start hooking up the NEMA network, which supports the point one antenna. So basically the, the NEMA network, if we start with our starter kit, we'll see that it contains a baseline cable, which will run portion partial length of the boat. We have a power node to hook power up to the NEMA network. And on one of the things to remember on your NEMA network, the power to the NEMA network must be switched. So this must be hooked up to switchable power. If you, if you leave the NEMA running hooked up to this antenna, the point one antenna, inside a garage, inside a building, where the antenna cannot get a signal after a period of time, it will automatically shut down and goes into what they call hibernation mode. It will stop functioning. The only way to bring the antenna out of hibernation mode is to physically disconnect the cable from the antenna from the NEMA network. So you have to loosen this up take this off for a period of time, then reconnect the antenna, and that will fix the hibernation. That being said, whenever you install the antenna, make sure that you label and know where this T connector for this antenna is in case that happens and you ever have to do it. Don't, don't bury this somewhere where you can't get to it later in case you do have to bring your antenna out of hibernation. The other thing that we will need is this device. This is, these are terminators for the NEMA network. The NEMA network is a directional network, meaning we will start from this end of the boat with this terminator, which has two male prongs, it will fit into the female end of the baseline cable or the female end of a T. So in that fashion there, and then this cable will fit like this, and all of your NEMA components will, will then run male female, male, female, male, female, up through the entire boat. All of your accessories on the NEMA network, your antennas, your temperature probes, gauges, all of your accessories connect to the top of the T. Never connect an accessory to this portion, the baseline portion of a T. All accessories absolutely must come from the top of the T. Termination on this end, baseline cable here, running up, multiple T's can hook together, and then on the final end up front, when we finish this network at the front, we will use the opposite terminator. This is a female terminator. It will terminate into the male end of the last T on the network at the bow and that creates a continuous loop in the NEMA. So we'll begin assembling our NEMA network by inserting some dielectric, putting our terminator on one end, our antenna, dielectric, And then our baseline cable. So this cable and our transducer, these two, we will hook together and they will go on 
fish cable and we will pull all of this up to the front or the console of the boat. Okay, so, so far today, we've been working on the back of the boat moving forward. We mounted the transducer for the structure scan 3D and then we began running, running the NEMA network forward after we mounted the point one GPS antenna. We have all those wires ran forward now. The NEMA is terminated at the console at this point in time because it will get connected to one of the locators before it travels forward. We'll also install the power node at the console. Then the transducer wire from the structure scan transducer, we've actually fished that into the compartment just forward of the console. And so we're going to mount this module box inside that console on a vertical wall and it'll be out of the weather. Not that that's critical. These are waterproof devices. Um, so we'll, from this module box, as we spoke before, it will serve as a network hub. So we will have a power cord going in. We'll fish the power cord back under the console, pick up power there. There will be an ethernet cable that will plug in here. This will go back to the console, which will plug into one of the locators. There'll be another ethernet cable that hooks into this that will then travel forward to the bow. We will pick up part of our NEMA network, which is the baseline or backbone cable going from the console to the bow. That will also run in the same area of the boat as this ethernet cable traveling to the bow. So we're going to go back over to the boat now. Our two transducer cables are already in the front compartment. We're going to talk about how to hook those up, how to hook the ethernet and the power cables to this before we mount it, and then talk a little bit about the NEMA networking. So let's head back to the boat. Okay. So we're back in the boat and we're going to go through the steps to hook up the module box for the 3D structure skin. Along the bottom, we have the ports that are clearly labeled transducer one, transducer two. When we look on the transducer cable itself, one is labeled transducer one, the other cable is lab labeled transducer two. So simply hook transducer one to transducer, transducer one. two. Now these pins inside this plug are very, very fragile. Remember what we talked before, anytime we have a permanent connection, when we put this together inside, we will fill these pins on the plug full of our dielectric grease. We'll fill all of that up to make sure that we have a good connection. And then on the top, we have our ethernet network ports. They're labeled net one, net two, net three. The port that you use doesn't make any difference whatsoever. So you can plug a network cable into net one, plug the other network cable into net two, and that will give full network functionality through this module box serving as the network hub. Therefore, all of your waypoint sharing, your chart sharing, your sonar sharing will all be handled by the circuitry in this module box. The unused ethernet port supplied with the module box are small yellow waterproof caps that you should insert over the top to make sure you don't have any open ports. And of course, the last connection will be our power connection, which will go in here. 
and then this wire will run back underneath the console to pick up power. So that's our completed assembly for this 3D structure scan box that we will be mounting on the inside using the screws provided. And then on the power cord, of course, we'll be putting an inline fuse holder, waterproof, with a supplied 3 amp fuse. So now we're getting ready to mount the structure scan box inside this compartment on this wall. You have to do a, a couple of things. The power cord we have, we'll have to fish that through the compartment and back underneath the console where we can pick up power. And then this ethernet cable will follow the power cable. We'll fish it back underneath the console and it will actually plug into the back of the Gen 3 HDS-12, which will be mounted in the, in the console. What I like to do from a troubleshooting standpoint is the orientation of this box be like this against this wall. So this ethernet cable is on this side of the box will run backwards to the console and the ethernet cable on this side will run forward towards the bow. That way you know which which ethernet cable goes to which locator in case there are ever any issues in the in, in the future. You can also label it on the tags which are provided on the ethernet cables which we'll do as well.